Hey guys, I want to share with you today this AI-powered database management tool called ChatToDB. Essentially, it is a database management system that has direct integration with powerful AI engines that allow you to generate and interrogate your data, debug queries, and ask it for visualizations quite easily. It also supports a wide array of databases. So it's MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, NoSQL and SQL based databases. They're all supported and there are some that are under development. Now, by going to the website, you can actually create an account right here. You would see login and you can log in using your Google or your GitHub or your email. And once you log in, you get access to a web portal where you can start your database management operations. Now, of course, this web portal will be best if you have a hosted database, but if you have a local database or databases that you need to administrate, then you can go ahead and download the client. Now, once you have the client, you'll notice that it is very similar to the web portal. However, when you go to add a data source or a new connection, while you can still choose from any of these technologies online, you can now actually connect to it locally. So if I choose to select a SQL Server connection, I can go ahead, give it a name, the host name, and the instance, if I need to support that, I can specify a username password and download the appropriate driver for the SQL Server connection that I'm about to use. Go ahead and connect. Now I already have a demo my SQL database here that I will use for the rest of this show and tell. So from here, like I said, it's a typical database management system. Now what really makes it different is the ability to prompt the AI and over to the right hand side, you'll see that you have that window which you can toggle using that little star button here. So you'd see that I was doing some work before, but let's start over. And I can do a new chat window first. They have to select the database or collection that I wish to work with. So I can go to demo and specify the ERP. And then I can also choose which powerful LLM I wish to use to support this. So I'm using GPT 4.0, but of course you can choose the one that resonates with your needs the most. So let us say, show me all the products and their total sales. I find the result of this very amazing. So yes, it's easy enough to go to a, a general LLM and you prompt and ask it questions, but you usually have to give it so much context. The cool thing about this is that the DBMS and the AI, they are already directly connected to the database that you specified because we specified that we're looking at this ERP database. So when I say show me all the products and their total sales, it knows that it can go into the database, find the products tables, find related tables that might be related to sales and generate this query. And a little further down, it's actually showing me the explanation of what it did to get to this result set based on that query. So that's how the side panel works. Let's take a look at the query console area. So if I click create console, we get where that you will get the text editor where we'd write our SQL statements. But if I use the forward slash, I get to prompt the AI. So I'm going to say, show me the low inventory products. And I'm going to change the engine because I found that Claude 37 Sonnet actually gives me better results. But of course you can trial, you can through trial and error and experimentation, find a model that resonates mostly with the way you speak and your expectations. So see, it generated this query for me. And if I execute it, it will show me the products that the inventory is under 10. Now notice that we actually have two products here, but one with a capital P and at least in this demo database, one with a common P. Now that's not a common thing that you would encounter, but I'm pointing this out because you'll notice that the columns here are actually different from the columns in the table with a capital P. So what I'm getting at is I deliberately use the capital P products table when asking for this um, show and tell from the AI because of how contextually aware it is. If you use the common P, then it would have looked at the common P table. So those little things really do matter, even though this is a very, this is a demo database. So it's not as strict as a real database would be, which is why we're ending up with two tables with essentially the same name.
So let us try something else. I'm going to ask for a slightly more complicated data set where I want the products and their total sales and the quantities sold. And after a few seconds, I have a nice query that I can then execute and get the result set for. Now, of course, in settings like this, where you have a lot of data and a lot of things you want to keep track of, like sales and customers and categories, etc., it would be good to give a dashboard. So there is a dashboard feature built right in, and this dashboard allows me to add charts. So I'm going to go ahead and add this, this data set as a chart. And you would have seen me click that chart button. I can choose a type of chart that I want. I'm going to go with a column chart this time around. I choose the axes. So the horizontal axis will be the product name and the other axis would be, let us say the total sales. There we go. And that's a preview. I can also change the theme color if I wish. I won't do that right here right now. That's not necessary. And then I can save. Before I save though, if I wanted to tweak the query, I could also go to data configuration where I can make adjustments to the query that is informing this chart. So let us go ahead and save. And then I can select a dashboard. So I'm going to say demo dashboard and create that. Add it to the demo dashboard, click OK. And then you'll see that it was pinned to the dashboard successfully. So I can go over to the dashboards section, look at the demo dashboard, and I will see that chart load. And of course I can add multiple charts. I can make the charts different sizes. So more important charts would get more um, screen space, etc. So it's up to you to design your dashboard how you wish to. Going back to our query, one of the very common reasons that we spend so much time in our query console is debugging. Sometimes you genuinely just write a faulty SQL statement, maybe because maybe you're switching between the different SQL engines and you're mixing up the syntax. That happens, we're all human. But we spend so many hours sometimes staring at the screen wondering why, where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? So one of the cool things about this tool is that it helps us debug very quickly. So because it's contextually aware and it knows the query that you want to debug, you can actually go ahead and say fix in chat and then it will go ahead, analyze what you've written and then give you a detailed error reason and solution. So the, firstly, it's telling me there's a space in sales order details. And then it's telling me that I'm referencing product names instead of product name. And then they're saying that I have a missing by keyword after the word order. And that is exactly correct. So I actually butchered this off camera, but I just wanted to show you that the butchering was detected by the, A the AI and then it gave me the correct version with the explanation of the changes made. So that really will reduce the amount of time you spend debugging your queries. So we see how productive we can be in terms of querying and doing database operations. But one of the more tedious database operations that we have to commit to is creating a database and creating tables. Well, the good thing is that with this tool, we can actually go and create a table and we have the option to use a table copilot. So yes, you have the regular editor, you create your table name, you add your columns one by one, set the data types, etc. But using the table copilot, I can say, um, and I'm going to come up with a different table. So let's say countries, and then I can specify some of the columns that I wish. And let's say we have an ID, we have a name and a geolocation for our argument's sake. Those are the three columns I want in my table called countries. And then I run this and it will compute. It will decide what the best data types are for each column. So even geolocation, it knows geometry would be the best data type. And I can go ahead and execute that. And it will go ahead and actually create that countries table for me with some commentary, some um, metadata about it, and all the columns are present. And of course I can use the table copilot to modify. So if I say add uh, first language and go ahead and execute that, 
then it will give me that alter statement and it will go ahead and add that first language column with an appropriate comment. So it's generating the metadata and everything for me on the fly. Now, one of the first things that we always want when we create a table is some sample data. So I can actually right click on the table and go down to generate test data. And the AI of course will analyze what this table is all about. And I'm, I figure it's using the comments for some context as to what kind of data should go in there, but it will generate some test data for that table. And then it basically just gives me a nice insert statement with some explanation as to what it is putting in. So it knows that the ID field is auto incrementing. So it does not give me a value for that. So I'll just go ahead and execute that query. It does give me a warning that I'm about to change some stuff in the database. I am sure that I'm not making any harmful changes. So I can go ahead and do that. And then if I look into my countries table, then I will see that I have good sample data. So that's nice. That's good for development databases. Final thing I want to review is the ability to generate an ER model. So you can right click the tables and you go to ER model. And after some time, time it will generate a nice, sophisticated and modern looking ER model. And of course you can manipulate your tables, your entities, move them around, see the connectivities, etc. And best of all, you can also export it as an image and use that image to do as you wish. So once again, I really like the modern look and feel of this diagram. So that concludes my demo of Chat2DB AI. It is a very powerful tool and I know that it will definitely help you with your productivity. They do offer a 14 day trial where you can get all of the pro features to test and experiment with. And then if you decide that you want to go ahead with this product, then you can jump over to the pricing and you can actually see the different tiers that are available. Now there is a free and open source edition of this app that runs out of a Docker container, but obviously it's not going to have all of the features that you'll get if you subscribe to the pro plan. So go ahead, make a decision, experiment. Let me know what you think about the tool. And I'm sure that the team would love the feedback, join in the discord, join in the community on GitHub, share feedback, contribute to the project project as well. And, you know, hit like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.